This is uh, my bedroom is back here. Yeah. They put heat in the floors. That looks real nice. This is what I saw. This is when they, before they put the sign in. There's the, there's the way to get here. The house is going to sit in. Yeah. yeah, see, this is his pond, and that's our house right here. Um, and it's not full, it'll be full when it comes up to here. Way up, and it's, it's almost as he can sit, he can literally sit on the porch. Um, can't be that. <laughs> I mean, I, Oh, very nice. It's pretty big. Well, it's, uh, the house is not big. You could probably yeah. sit it down inside of the one. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, um, the house part is like 25. Um, it's 25 feet wide, depth wise. And then it's like 56 counting the garage. Yeah, you know, like I said, um, you never thought you'd be living in a brand new home. I never thought I'd live in a out of the one I live in. I told them I figured I'd die in that one. And I told them, um, I told Harry, I said, if I die while we're still living here, I just said, I want you to just leave me in it and shove the, shove the walls in there. <laughs> Take that, my Wait, let me get up. It'll be easier. Hi. I saw that. Thanks. Oh, Jefferson. Sorry. Could you turn Sharon's microphone on, please? It should be on. Okay, one, two. Use that. Hers, hers on. No wonder. <laughs> Can you hear me now? All right, this is a great thing. Now, there's somebody in here that can't hear me because 
I have a hearing aid in my hand right here and belongs to somebody out there in the audience. So if you're missing a hearing aid, come and get them. Maybe that's from somebody from before. Would you like one? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I'm not going to be here for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Psalm 118.24. So um, thank you for being here. We're here to lift up the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So let's pray and give him thanks for this opportunity. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you that you have called us here. Nobody's here by accident today. You've called us here. You've called us here to lift up your name, to thank you, to praise you. As we will learn in the psalm later on today, Lord, to, to respond to what you have done for us in praise and in thanksgiving. So I do pray, Lord, you would help us not to just kind of go through the Sunday morning motions. That you would open our ears, open our eyes, open our heart, and the power of your Holy Spirit would speak to us and draw us close. Thank you for those that may be watching online right now or maybe even later down the road. And thank you for that technology. And we pray that it would all work correctly so others can indeed follow along. Lord, we give you this time. We thank you. We praise you. We lift up your name. We need you. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. We invite you to stand. Our call to worship this morning is uh, Psalm 32, verses 1 through 7. It's on the screen. Ken is going to lead us in it. Let's be called to worship uh, by the word of God. Oh, oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose every work of the Lord has cleared their guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. When I refuse to confess my sin, my body wasted away, and I mourn all day long. 
Amen. You may be seated. Confess means uh, simply to speak and agree. The agree is the con, and the speak is the best. And when Jesus Christ says to us uh, that we're dead in our sins and our trespasses, we can either disregard that, fight against it, or we can confess that it's true. And that's what our confession is. Yes, Lord. You got me again. I am a, I am a sinner. But hopefully everyone in this room is a sinner that's covered under the blood of Christ. And, and the righteousness of Christ is over us. But let's confess daily. Let's keep a short record here before the Lord. Let's confess daily um, our sins before him. Together. Father God, I have sinned times without number, and have been guilty of pride and unbelief, and have been glad to seek you in my daily life. My sins and shortcomings present me with a list of accusations, but I thank you that they will not stand against me, for all have been laid on the Lord Jesus Christ. By the Holy Spirit, Please deliver me from every evil act, every interest of former sins, everything that is the brightness of your grace in me, everything that prevents me from taking delight in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, individually, let us confess our sins before the Lord. Sign. declaration of pardon is given to those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear this good news. We cannot work off the debt that we owe. There is no penance we can pay or merit we can gain that will take away our sins. What hope do we have? This hope. But now a righteousness from God, apart from the law, has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness of God, from God, comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Jesus has paid the debt. If you believe and you confess your sins, you are free and forgiven. Live in that freedom and forgiveness today, that all those in Christ shout, Amen. 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 downstairs during Sunday school on a song that goes along with our memory verse. You remember the memory verse, right? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Well, you want to sing it? you remember the song? All right. Stand up. 
Lord willing, the technology will work. Go ahead and press play. Turn up the... I saw a face over here say, I remember what he's going to do. <laughs> so what do I have here? What, what do I have here, you guys? I'll hold it up so everybody back here. It's a pumpkin, right? And what do we like to do with these around this time of year? We like to carve them, don't we? Well, yeah, make pie. Carve them and make pie. Well, I'm going to say with you guys the pumpkin prayer. All right, so will you say it with me? I'll say the words, and then you, then the rest of you all can join in with me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus as, I carve my pumpkin, as I carve my pumpkin, help me to say this prayer. Help me to say this prayer. Open, my mind, Open my mind so I can learn about you. So I can learn about you. Okay, where's our mind? Here, right? So we took the top off. Took the top off, and then I... Now, a lot is popular right now. I saw online and people are cutting them in the bottom and cleaning them up that way. But I did it the old-fashioned way. Took it off the, off the top. So we're asking God to open our mind. Here's the next line in the prayer. Take away, Take away all my sin, all my sin and, forgive me and forgive me for the wrong that I do. For the wrong that I do. Okay. Sin is, is any time we, we disobey. And, and even if we disobey mom and dad, we're ultimately disobeying God because he made us, right? And so that's yucky. Sin is yucky and it's nasty and it's just like the junk inside of this pumpkin, isn't it? Yeah, here's a little bit of what was left inside there. It's squishy and yucky. It gets all over your fingers. All right, so we're asking God to take the sin, the yucky, the disobedience, and all that stuff in us and get rid of it, okay? Later on, I'll throw this away, because I'll be done with it. I'm going to show you to see. All right, now, the next part of our prayer, what, what shape are these eyes? Hearts. Hearts. So what's hearts to make you think of? Your heart inside your body. And what else? God. It makes you think of love, right? All right, here's the next part. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. So your love, then so your love, I will see. I will see. All right, so we're asking God to help us see his love. That's the heart-shaped eyes. Now, what is the, what's the nose here? Well, 
it does kind of look like a plus sign. Is that what you said, Owen? Yeah. It does look like a plus sign. It's supposed to look like a cross. What happened on the cross with Jesus? He died for our sins. Yeah, that's the next part of the prayer. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. For, the times, for the times I've turned up my nose, up my nose. At, what at what you've given. All right, so we've asked God to open our minds to help us see his love, to remember his cross, to take away our sin, and he can do that because of his cross. Like we said, Jesus died on the cross. Um, this pumpkin is unlike a lot of pumpkins because it's got what? Ears. What shape are the ears? Squares kind of remind you of a book. What's, what's the book that we learn about God? All right, here's the next part. Open my ears. Open my ears. So your word I will hear. So your so word, word I will hear. Okay, we read God's word, we read the Bible, we learn more and more about God's love and his forgiveness and how to follow him and be thankful to him. What is the shape of the mouth? Fish, what's that have to do with anything? <laughs> Was I hungry for a fish sandwich when I came out of Vegas? Did you know that the fish is an ancient, an ancient means very old, it's an ancient symbol for followers of Jesus. You see them on cars sometimes. Sometimes on cars in the back you'll see a, what looks like a little fish. That means they're a follower of Jesus. Okay, so that's the next part is open my mouth, open my mouth. to tell others you're near. You're near. All right, then one more thing. What, what do we do with these pumpkins then when we uh, when we carve them out? What do we put inside? A candle. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. In all I say and do. In all I say and do. Amen. 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 All right, Ellie, I'm going to ask you after I like this to turn off the lights back. Okay, Ellie, turn them off for just a second. Well, it's not very dark in here, is it? But you can still see it shining through. And if, even if it was very dark in here, this candle would shine through. The candle's not the brightest one, but it's, it's doing a good job. So this helps us remember that God loves us, right? He loves us so much he sent Jesus to die on the cross. He wants to tell us all about that in our mind and in our heart. He wants us to read his word to get to know him better, to tell others about him. And when we love Jesus, guess what? He says the Holy Spirit will live in us. There'll be a light inside of us that will shine out of us so that others can see who he is. Pretty awesome, huh? Yeah. I have a copy of the pumpkin prayer to give to each of you. And if any of you want it, I have extras. Um, but I love to share the pumpkin prayer uh, this time of year, every year, and I, I enjoy carving the pumpkins, and maybe you'll want to do one too, and you'll remember all these things about God's love. All right, Ellie, go ahead and turn the lights back on, and let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for these awesome kids and the song. This is the day that you have made, the day where we can celebrate salvation, knowing you, being in a relationship with you. I do pray you would fill us with the love of Christ, that we would shine for others to see, Lord, that we would tell others about you, that we would continue pouring in your word, that, Lord, you would get rid of the sin like you just prayed in that prayer of confession, get rid of it from our lives, and we thank you so much for what you've done on the cross. Thank you for these young, young women and this young man, and pray that they would grow up to be godly women and a godly man, and give you glory and honor always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thanks, Peter. And then over there, there's some, there's some toys over there. Okay. New ones, you can each get one. And then some candy. The great pumpkin came and brought more Hot Wheels. <laughs> Yes, any of you, I did not come up with that. That's something I learned years and years and years ago. 
And if any of you would like a copy, I have more up front so we can make sure that you get that. Can everybody hear me okay? All right, great. I'm going to invite you to turn in your Bibles this morning to Psalm 27. Psalm 27 in the Old Testament. <laughs> and while you are turning to that psalm, let's go to the Lord in prayer together. Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for what we have declared this morning. That we have said, praise the name of of the Lord our God forevermore. That you, Lord, are the God of angel armies and we need not be afraid of anything. Lord, I thank you that you want to fill us with your light and your love so that it shines to others to see you. And I thank you that this is the day that you have made. And I thank you that you forgive our sins when we confess them, when we agree, like Ken said. Thank you. Now I pray that you would speak to us from your word. Lord, I don't have anything good to say, but you have amazing things to say from your word to your people. So I pray that you would speak to me and through me from your word that we may hear from you and may be drawn closer to you, Lord. And we may praise your name, Lord. I do pray the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are my rock. You are my redeemer. Speak to your people in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Psalm 27, a psalm of David. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord, be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your, hand, your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, O God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing out violence. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to Fear. Sometimes we seem to enjoy it. Sometimes. Sometimes we will pay to experience it. You go to Kennywood tonight and give them $39.99, they'll scare the pants off. Or go up to Conneaut Lake and pay $25 to experience their 13 levels of fear. Humans seem to enjoy fear when it's not real, when it's fake. We don't like it so much in real life, though, do we? When I was a camp counselor, we had what was called the, the light system. And, and what that meant was if we were going to do an activity, 
a, a, a child might say, that's a green light for me. I, I have no problem doing this activity. They might say, that's a yellow light for me. I don't, I'm a little bit scared, but I'm willing to give it a try. And then a red light was, there is no way I'm going to do this activity. So you would take the kids to the climbing tower, and you would climb up the tower, and then you'd go on a zip line, and some kids would just jump on that. It's a green. I'm going all the way up. And we always wanted the kids in the yellow. The kids said, you know what? I'm a little bit scared of that. We, we said, you know what? Face, face your fears. Be challenged a little bit. See what can happen. But if they said, that's a red, 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 I'm not going up there, we never made them do something that they absolutely did not want to do. Fear, different for different people. For some people, it's snakes, or maybe it's bugs, or maybe it's the dark, or maybe it's some combination of both. And for so many, the universal fear, of course, is, is death. King David had fears that were specific to him. You can imagine as a, as a king, some of the things he may have been afraid of. Attacks from the enemy. Attacks from within. Having enough food. Making sure that people have good policies in place. And we know that David was a man after God's own heart. He, as a leader, as a king, wanted the people to be following the Lord. And he wanted to be leading them to the Lord. He maybe feared that they would not be doing that. His fears are very specific, maybe more specific than some of ours would be, but we can relate, I believe, to his right because we have fears in this life. And what I believe the Lord is saying to us through his song here, a psalm is a song, remember that, through Psalm 27, he is reminding us that God created us to be in a relationship with him. So may we dwell with Christ and live with confidence without fear. God created us to be in a relationship with him. Dwell with Christ so we can live with confidence and without fear. I always like to take the Psalms and just kind of go through them verse by verse. This one's not that long. It won't take that long. But it starts with verse 1 there. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? First thing I want to remind you of, you know this, you've heard this before, but we forget, is that you'll see if you read in your Bible there, it's capital L, capital O, capital R, capital B. They're all capital letters. That means the Hebrew is the name of God as opposed to the office of God. It's the name of God. It's the I am that I am that he revealed himself to when Moses said, who is speaking? It's the relational, loving, covenant-keeping name of God. And he says, because of the name of the Lord, whom shall I fear? The Hebrew word is Yarah, and it means what you think it means. Fear, to be afraid. He's saying, because I have the Lord, I have light, I have salvation, I don't need to be scared. The next line, the Lord is the stronghold. I looked at the Hebrew word stronghold, and you could also say fort, fortress, refuge. So in a sense, David's starting out this thing by saying, because of the Lord, I don't have any reason to fear. I've got light, I've got salvation. Because of the Lord, he's my refuge. I don't have any reason to be afraid. This is a different Hebrew word. It means one more like dread. I don't need to fear. I don't need to dread. Because of the Lord, my light, my salvation, and my stronghold. What an opening statement. What a way to start out a song. And, and when he says that he's my salvation, you need to know that in Hebrew, the word is literally literally yasha to deliver from where we get the name yeshua which in english is jesus remember church as followers of the lord jesus christ you have light remember jesus said i am the light of the world 
You have salvation. We're told in Ephesians that we've been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. In Jesus Christ, you have security, refuge, a fortress. What a way to start this song out. Verse 2. When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Now David had some real-life foes coming after him, trying to take over the kingdom. And it hasn't happened yet, but he's so confident in the Lord, he knows it will. They will be the ones to stumble and fall because of the Lord. Verse 3, though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will, will be confident. If an army was besieging me and someone was breaking out war against me, I would be pretty tempted to be afraid, to be filled with fear, to be filled with dread. And that's exactly why David starts out the psalm the way he does. He says, I don't have to be. Everything about this says I should be, but I don't have to be because of the Lord. He has taken it all away. Lord willing, you don't have an army declaring war on you or besieging you, but we do have things in life that besiege us and declare war on us. With the Lord Jesus Christ, we don't need to fear, and we don't need to dread. Then he gets to the heart of the whole thing here in verse 4. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. David wants daily communion with the Lord. He's saying, let me dwell in your house. Let me look at you. Let me seek you. David understands that we were created as human beings to be in a relationship with God. And the kids know that because of the cross of Jesus Christ, that is completely possible. Isn't that incredible? The, the promise, the covenant promise all through Scripture, from beginning to end, is I will be your God, you will be my people. And the gospel of Jesus has made that possible. The gospel message that these kids were able to say, Jesus Christ died as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. He came to us. He dwelt among us. He, the Bible tells us, is the exact representation of God. He died on the cross. He rose again. He called us to turn and trust in him. And then he says, not only did I come to dwell among you, in John 14, he promises he'll send the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. But one thing that David asks for is totally possible thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it would be awesome if we come to Jesus and we receive his laws, we turn, we repent, we believe the good news, we are born again, we understand we have the Holy Spirit living, and the rest of life was a cakewalk. That would be awesome. That's not the reality. Verse 5. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. Listen to these images. And remember, once again, that psalms are songs. So picture yourself driving down Interstate 79 at 65 miles an hour, a beautiful sunny day, and this song is on the radio. And all of a sudden you hear these images, safe in God's dwelling, hidden in shelter, set high on a rock, your head lifted up safe and secure. We sing it on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all the ground is sinking sand. Now, notice something else. The trouble has not gone away. 
You all know how much I love that passage in Numbers chapter 21 where the, the snakes come out and Moses is told to make the bronze serpent and, and hold it up. And the people originally said to Moses, please pray that the Lord would take the snakes away. And the Lord did not take the snakes away. You don't understand that, but he does. Instead, he provided a cure in the midst of that trouble. Look upon the, the snake put up on the pole and you will live. And of course, Jesus used that in chapter 3 of John when he's talking to Nicodemus. He said, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. The trouble did not go away. But you're safe in the middle of the trouble. Jesus said it this way, in this life you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Verse 6b, we learn how we are supposed to respond to this. At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. The proper response for us to what the Lord has done and what he continues to do for us is to praise and to thank him. And to lift up his name. Verse 7 and 8. Hear my voice when I call the Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says if you seek his face, Lord, your face, Lord, I will seek. Our response is to praise him and continually seek after his presence. And then he comes to some petitions, some things. He asks, verse 7, Hear my voice, Lord. Be merciful to me. Answer me. Continuing in 9 and 10, Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, O God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. All the commentaries and all the Hebrew uh Hebrew books tell you that the, though it says, though my father and mother forsake me, the Hebrew word has the, the sense of if. If this happens, if my father and mother forsake me, you won't forsake me, O Lord. Do not forsake me, O Lord. Just five psalms earlier, Psalm 22. This is the one that Jesus quoted when he was on the cross. Do you remember how it starts? It starts like this. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Do you ever really, really listen to the songs that we sing in worship? There's a praise song that we sang often. And the chorus is, amazing love, how can it be that you, my king, would die for me? Well, that song starts out with this sentence. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. Hanover Church, one of the greatest truths in human history, probably the greatest truth in human history, is that on the cross, Jesus took our sin. He who knew no sin became sin. He took our sin. He was forsaken on the cross so that this prayer could be answered. In Christ, you and I do not have to be forsaken. For, for he was forsaken, so we didn't have to. Isaiah puts it this way. By his stripes, we are healed. I wish we were Pentecostals right now, because I need an amen. Amen. He was forsaken, so we do not have to. So we can confidently live in this world of trouble in Christ. Now, David knows we're still fickle human beings. So in verses 11 through 13, he says, help, help me to continue to grow. Teach me your way, O Lord, 
Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes. For false witnesses rise up against me, breathing out violence. I'm still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The Revised Standard Version puts it this way. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And then he ends with something interesting. He ends with an imperative, and you've heard me talk about imperatives before, and almost always, not all the time, but almost always, I've told you, this is a plural imperative. That means all of you should do this thing. Here we have a singular imperative. You, as an individual, should do this thing. Well, what's the imperative? The imperative he ends with in verse 14 is this. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. I discovered something interesting in the Hebrew, and it's, it's a little tiny, what to most of us would be totally squiggly lines, but they're letters in Hebrew. There's two of them, and it's the Hebrew word al. And almost every single English translation of the Bible puts it this way. Wait on the Lord or wait for the Lord. And I'm not a good enough Hebrew to scholar to say, well, it really should be this way. But I did find it interesting that that little Hebrew word out, the basic definition of it is in or into, to or toward. Wait into the Lord. Wait towards the Lord. When I read that and I was praying about it, and I said, what are, you, what are you trying to get across here, Lord? And I believe it's this. It's not waiting like we're in a hospital waiting to have surgery or waiting to go in for an appointment, because there all you can do is watch the price of right or whatever talk show they have on and flip through the magazine. Not waiting like that. Active waiting. Active leaning into the Lord. Active trusting in the Lord while we wait. Well, wait on what, Pastor Jefferson? His return. His return. In other words, David ends this whole thing. He started out by saying, there is nothing to fear. There is nothing to dread. You have light, you have salvation, you have confidence in the Lord. And he ends this saying by saying, and yet it's a dark world. It's a sinful world. It is a fearful world. It is a dreadful world. It is a world of woe, as we will sing here in a little bit. But in that, don't fear. Actively, confidently, trust and wait on the Lord. Dwell in Him and even bear fruit in the midst of, midst of it, because He is coming again. Wait for the Lord, and while you wait, serve Him. Sing praise. Rejoice. Grow. Well, so what, Pastor Jefferson? You told us how much it costs to get into Kennywood. And you mentioned a squealing lines of a Hebrew word. But so what is exactly what we've just been saying? May we be united to Christ. May we be actively waiting on his return. Not just kind of sitting there twiddling our thumbs, but trusting in him, growing in him letting his light shine through us so that others see him. And we can do this all because he took on flesh. He dwelled with us. He was forsaken, so I didn't have to be. And he is our salvation. He is our light. He is our refuge. And he is our confidence. Oh, man, isn't that awesome? In this life, we will have trouble. But take heart, Jesus said, because of his cross, because of his love, there's no fear. God created us to be in a relationship with him. May you and I dwell in Christ, living confident without fear. Lord God, there's 
A lot of scary things in this world. We live in a world that is broken and sinful and violent. And it would be easy to kind of just want to hide out. And I, I, we kind of wish, Lord, in our humanness, that you would just do away with all that. But in your wisdom, in your providence, in your sovereignty, you haven't got rid of the trials. You haven't got rid of the fears. You haven't got rid of the evil. But you've given us the cure. And that is the blood of Jesus shed on the cross. So Lord, I pray that everyone here understands that relationship. Lord, I pray that everyone is covered by the blood of the Lamb. And if they're not, Lord, then today would be the day of salvation. The message is simple. Turn to me. Turn from sin. Turn from your own way and, and believe the good news that you died on the cross, that you took everything needed to make us right. Lord, I pray if that's the, today's the day of salvation, what a day this is that the Lord has made. And that they would walk, being lifted up by you as a son or daughter of the living king every single day. Lord, there's many here that have understood that relationship. They've been on that journey for a long time. <clears throat> and life in this, this world never seems to get easier. Oh, thank you for this reminder, Lord. Thank you for this reminder that you are our light, you are our salvation, you are our refuge. Oh yeah, there will be trouble. But Lord, you will take us through it. You will hold us tight. May we rest in you. May we dwell in you. May we actively wait on your return, shining your light because of the power of your Holy Spirit. Not because of anything that we can do, and often in spite of what we do. How awesome that is. Thank you. Love you. We praise you. We need you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> we respond to God's word um, in a number of different ways. And one of them certainly is to go to him in prayer. So uh, just would ask you to, to pray for Diana. She had a successful ankle surgery this week. Just pray that the, the pain would subside and Roy would uh, have the patience to help her out. Uh, um, what else would you like to lift up before the Lord's here? Tim Lentold, Elliot has uh, RSV and a bacterial pneumonia on top of that. Oh my. And it's a huge children's hospital. Good friend. RSV and pneumonia. pneumonia. And he's two years old. Two months. Two months. No. And his name's Elliot. Okay. Pray for Ellie. <clears throat> I have two. Um, one woman's name is Denise. She has ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, another friend, Sharon. Um, she went through chemo before her cancer, but it is more. Mm -hmm. A couple of friends, Denise and Sharon, both uh, struggling with cancer. Yeah. Um, I want to praise God for the um, turnout for Kids Bible Club on Wednesday night, and Dr. Jefferson led us in music, and those kids, they melted it out. It was just brought tears to your eyes listening to them praise God. So uh, I praise him for their uh, enthusiasm. It was awesome. There are over 59 kids registered for the, the Kids Club in Mill Creek. Um, they weren't all there because there was some absent or, or things, and there may be even some more in the in the future that will come. So pray, praise God for it. Yeah, they sang uh, the song we often sing: "Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit." It was like it's like a choir. It was awesome. <clears throat> Charlene, um, my friend Karen and my friend Liz both with COVID and for the grafting. Karen and Liz with um, COVID. Yeah, and our sympathies to Frank and Carrie Graff and the family on the, the passing of Frank's dad. Let's go to the Lord together. <laughs> Lord, the amazing thing about what we just said in the message there 
is not only are you all those things to us, but in this relationship, you tell us to come before you to cast our burdens or our anxieties or our cares upon you. And Lord, that's incredible. <clears throat> you heard a long list just now. I don't, I don't need to, to rename everyone. You are present here, and Lord, you heard. And there's some needs. There are needs for healing. <clears throat> there, there's um, needs for you to take, take viruses away. And then bring healing, specifically thinking of the, the little two-month-old. Lord, there's patience and involved in that with the parents as they, as they wait. Help them to wait and we lift them up to you. And Lord, I know that these are, are not the only, only things on our hearts. There's probably other things that we just didn't want to mention out loud um, that, that weigh us down. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to cast our cares upon you and to give you praise, and to give you glory, and to, to, to witness to the testimony of how awesome you are. Lord, thank you for all those kids singing praise to you. Thank you for that ministry, and we pray, Lord, for week two, that, that you would provide all the helpers that are needed, you would provide everything uh, for that. Lord, thank you for our preschool, that the kids can learn about you on a daily basis. I, I lift up everyone involved in that ministry. Lord, thank you for the kids singing the song this morning. Thank you for our Sunday school teachers. Thank you for our elders. Thank you for our deacons. Lord, we pray for those missionaries around the world that are, are sharing your love, sometimes in very hostile, dangerous situations. Lord, we thank you for your missionaries right here in the United States that are sharing your word with people that have never heard it. Lord, we pray for those who serve our country, and, and we pray for those that uh, miss them while they are away on, on active duty. Lord, we pray for our leaders. Lord, we have, uh, uh, the way we've set things up, we have an election coming, and, and we need your wisdom. We, we want to have leaders that desire to serve and not to be so. Lord, I pray that you would give us wisdom and give us leaders that, that can know and follow you and honor you. Thank you. Thank you for this time of worship. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We lift up Penny. She continues to fight against cancer as well as these friends of Matt. Lord, we lift up Mitzi and, and Teddy. And thank you for their, they're not here with us in, in this building, but Lord, they're part of us, and we thank you for it. And now would you hear us as we come together praying the prayer that you taught us. The Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. We respond to God's word by giving of our time, of our abilities, and the resources he's given us in the first place. So I would invite the ushers to come forward and receive the tithes and offerings given.
Thank you, Lord God, for these gifts that have been given. And we pray that you would provide for every need of your people. We pray that the message of Jesus might go out throughout Hanover Township, throughout Western Pennsylvania, throughout your world. Thank you for providing for your every need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Maybe seated, I'd like you to look at the uh, Hanover happenings real quick. I think those of you that are um, helping on Wednesday with snacks, I think we're good. I think we know what we're doing. Just show up at Mill Creek at 2.30. And uh, those of you that are helping in other ways also know when to be there. Uh, you'll see there we had kind of forgot to, to put this in there, but we are part of the EPC, and part of being part of the EPC is what is called the per member asking. Uh, so we'd like to collect that before the end of the year so that can be sent in and see what the amounts there are for us. Um, there is a congregational meeting next week that we, we have uh, presented the bylaws. Don, uh, when this service is over, has the finalized copy to pass out to you and um, wants to just t talk to you about the one thing that we will be voting on. Well, two things we'll be voting on. Uh, next week with that. But all members are, are invited and please participate in that next Sunday uh, in that congregational meeting. This Sunday is when those things will be passed out just for you to see all the minor changes that have been uh, clarified on that. Uh, next Sunday is also, Lord willing, our time to go to Lakeview. We were not able to go in October because they had COVID situations uh, going on, but Lord willing, that's clear, and we're allowed back in, and so we'll uh, be going there to worship at 3 o'clock next Sunday afternoon. I'm very excited about the 13th. Teen Challenge is going to be here, and, and Teen Challenge is actually called Teen and Adult Challenge. Most of the guys, if not all the guys that come, will not be teenagers. They will be adults. And this is a Christ-centered addiction recovery program. And it's an amazing ministry that I've known about for a number of years. I've participated in their chapel out in Cheswick the last two years. Now they're bringing a team of about 13 people here, 13 guys. They will give testimonies. I think they'll do some skits and uh, maybe lead us in some music on the 13th. And then afterwards, we'll eat together. We'll eat with them and uh, invite, invite you to bring a covered dish that day. And it'll be a, a glorious day. And then you can see some of the, uh, believe it or not, the Christmas activities coming up, the ladies' breakfast on um, this coming Saturday. That's here, right? Yes. Okay, ladies' breakfast is, is here. Uh, you see some shoe boxes have already come in. Haven't said a lot about it. I know the ladies are working on them at breakfast Saturday. If any of the rest of you would like to do shoe boxes, um, we'll be taking them in November to, uh, to go on their way. I believe by that 13th when the three <laughs> challenge is here. Because I believe that's the week that they uh, get collected. Um, and there's sign-ups out there for the live nativity. So if you'd like to be part of that. Anything else that needs to be mentioned that I'm forgetting? All right. Tomorrow is, is known as Reformation Day. The day that, that Martin Luther... Uh, put on the door of Wittenberg what what he his grievances, what he thought that the church should be talking about. And, and one of his most famous um, hymns that he wrote goes along with our message today, that God is a mighty fortress. So let's stand and say, a mighty fortress is our
song, great, great song to send us out. Uh, those of you that are members, just hang tight for a second after the benediction so the, the ballot that you will see next week can be explained to you. But how awesome. We don't need to be afraid. We don't need to fear. In Jesus Christ, we have salvation, we have light, we have confidence. Let's actively wait for his return, serving and growing in him. Now receive the message. The Lord bless you and keep you. Or make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Oh, God. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>